I want to show you exactly what happens when you add salt to water. I hope you can see this video. When an ionic substance such as sodium chloride is placed in water, water molecules interact with the ions on the surface. If the salt is soluble, the attractive interactions with water molecules overcome the ionic attractions within the lattice. The solvated ions move off the surface and become separated in solution. Notice that water molecules cluster about the anions with the hydrogens directed toward the negatively charged ions. On the other hand, <coughs> water molecules interact with the positively charged cations through the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygens. When an ionic substance... All right, let me reshare my slides back. And that's where I was. And I hope you can see the slides now. So what happened in the process of the solution of sodium chloride in water? I'm going to go through the parts of video stepwise. So what we did, we placed sodium chloride. This is the cubic structure of unit cell of sodium chloride. So when you see sodium chloride, it's composed of these simple cubic. Inside each cube, as I mentioned, the blue one is sodium. Let's say blue one is sodium. And if you look at this sodium, do you see there is one, two, three, four Cl minus around it. There is one on the top that you can't see above. And there is one underneath that you can't see. There. So there are six Cl minus surrounding every sodium. If you look at every CL minus, you are going to see the same thing. Let's take a look at this one. Do you see there is one, two, three, four blue color ions, which are sodium, surrounding each CL minus. There is one sodium above the green chloride right in here that you can see and there's one below so these are negative and positive charges ion you're connected together by a strong ion ion interaction so when you place sodium chloride in water water molecules as i said as you know you're polar you have positive ends and negative end. Obviously, the negative end loves sodium. Negative end loves Na plus. So, water molecules are going to approach Na plus, the blue ion, trying to pull it. But they realize that chloride has a stronger attraction to sodium. Is holding on to blue ions of sodium and they need more and more help from other water molecules. So you could only see, I could only show, I could only show two water molecules here, but many water molecules, which are not shown in this figure, are coming and pulling sodium, taking it away from a strong pool of Cl minus. It's like a toggle board. Cl minus on one side, I pulling an A plus. Lots of water molecules are pulling an A plus out of the crystal. So eventually, because there are many solvent molecules, they win. They take away, this is sodium with positive charge, and they're going to surround it. They make cluster of water molecules around it. And that way, the process of dissolution is happening. Now, you might also wonder what is happening to Cl minus, which is inside the crystal, water molecule. As you know, they have positive end. What is the positive end? What are the positive end of water molecule? The hydrogens, the hydrogens. So do you see this water molecule is approaching Cl minus, which is hydrogen end, which are positive, is trying to pull Again here, one water molecule can't do that. 
another molecule comes and help, and then there are many others which I can't show you in this diagram. So there are enough water molecules that they are pulling Cl minus away from these sodiums around it. Once they overcome the attraction between Cl minus and Na plus, this is what is happening. There is cluster of water molecules approaching Cl minus, holding on to it, attracting each other. So this is what is happening in the process of this relation, uh, dissolution. Sodium ions have been solvated, which means surrounded by solvent molecules. Chloride ions have been solvated by water molecules. So Cl minus and Na plus can't see each other anymore to attract each other because water molecules are surrounding them. So if I were to show one more step, do you see here? Step number one, water molecules are seeing the positive sodium <clears throat> and they are seeing the negative charge of the sodium chloride. So they start pulling. This is where enough, do you see more water molecule? Now it's surrounding Cl minus with their positively charged hydrogens. And do you see many other molecules are surrounding the positive charge of the blue sodium ion with the negative end, which is oxygen. So this continues, water molecules are attaching the solid of sodium chloride, and this is what is happening. This is what you see inside the test tube when you have added crystals of salt, table salt, and you shake it when it dissolves, this is what you have. The crystal of the solid is gone. I hope this makes sense to you. I wish this was a live lecture. I would ask you, do you have any question? But if you have any question, you know I have got office hours, I have got lab times. I love to see you to come and see me with your list of questions. All right. Oh, by the way, this term solvate, solvation, solvate means solvent molecules surrounding the molecules of solute. By the way, I'm going, can I call crystal of sodium chloride as solute, the thing which is going to dissolve? And can I call water molecules, solvent. What is involved in the process? Forming solvates. So these are terms that you see a lot in this chapter. If I go to the next slide. Guys, if you have some water in the test to you, did we say that water molecules attract each other by hydrogen bonding? So can I say, if you have pure solvent, like water in the test tube, they're attracted together. The type of attraction is called solvent-solvent attraction. And if I am adding few crystals of sodium chloride to a test tube which contains water, can I say that Sodium chloride are solute and solute particles are connected together. They also have solute solute attraction. So, what is holding solid sodium chloride together? Solute solute attraction. What is holding water molecules together? Solvent solvent attraction. The process of dissolution is going to happen only if solvent and solute can attract each other. And this attractive forces between solvent and solute is larger than the other two. Let's call this attraction number one, attraction number two, attraction number three. If number three is larger than number one and number three is larger than number two, 
That's the only time that dissolution is going to happen. That's why suppose you get some candle and have a small shavings of candle. You add it to a test tube of water. It's not going to dissolve. Why? Because candle is nonpolar. Solvent is polar. Polar and nonpolar don't like each other. It's like adding, let's say, Vaseline to water. It's like adding gasoline to water. So if you don't have significant attraction between solvent and solute, the process of dissolution is not going to happen. There should always, the only case that you see dissolution is that solvent and solute, the attraction between solvent and solute are larger than solvent-solvent interaction and solute-solute interaction. Otherwise, they stay with their own kind. Let's say, if I have water in the test tube and gasoline in a beaker, I add gasoline to water, they cannot interact. They don't have solvent solute interaction. So they stay with their own kind. They keep solute solute interaction, interaction between gasoline molecule and solvent solvent interaction, which is interaction between water. They stay with their own kind. That means they make two phases. They do not mix up. That's why you get two layers if you add gasoline to water. That's why you get two layers if you add oil to water. So based on that, can I say like dissolves like? That means polar substances dissolve in polar solvent. Nonpolar substances dissolve in nonpolar solvents. For example, the lab that you are going to do pretty soon, we are using hexane. Hexane is a solvent. It's it's actually one of the components of gasoline. It has got six carbon, that's why we call it hexane. Hexane is nonpolar. Why hexane is nonpolar? Because this is the structure of hexane. It has got six carbons and lots of carbon hydrogen bond. Do you remember carbon hydrogen bonds are nonpolar? Carbon hydrogen bonds are nonpolar. Why? The difference of polarity between carbon and hydrogen is what? 2.1 electronegativity of hydrogen, 2.5 electronegativity of carbon. The difference is 0.4. That's delta. Electronegativity is 0.4. Remember, we needed a minimum of 0.5 difference between electronegativity to make polar bond. So this bond is nonpolar. If it is nonpolar bond, also carbon carbon bond, that's another type of bond you have. Of course, they are nonpolar. Why? Because we have zero difference of electronegativity between two carbons. So can I say, let me go back, I'm sorry. What happened? So this compound, hexane, doesn't have any polar bond, so it's non-polar. So if I add oil to hexane, it will dissolve. If I add water to hexane, it doesn't dissolve because water is polar, hexane is nonpolar. We say like dissolves like. That means nonpolar mixes with nonpolar. That means hexane and gasoline and oil, you're all nonpolar, they mix. 
But hexane does not mix with water because it's non-polar and polar, they don't like each other. 